Another book. Yes, another one. Super exciting. Uh -huh. um, so you collaborated with your friend Graham on this one again. Yes. Talk to me about exploring New Zealand, why you guys decided to do this. It, New Zealand is this incredible group of islands. It's a bit like Neverland, Peter Pan's Neverland. Um, it has everything from fjords to glaciers to to jungles. There's everything to do there. Loads of adrenaline sports yeah. and crazy wildlife from great white sharks to kiwi birds, flightless birds to to creatures that are still around from the di dinosaurs times. I mean, it really is this incredible uh, country. So we wanted to go there. Also, it is his home uh, okay. where he lives now, but also it has a lot of Scottish connections. A lot of Scots um, went there and colonized it right, uh, a couple right. hundred years ago. So sort of that six degrees of separation thing right? happening. Yes, yes, we're <laughs> like all it. Scottish. I like it. Yeah. Uh, you guys went zip lining. Did. You did all kinds of kind of wild things. Are you yeah. an adventure junkie? Um, I think I am, and to be totally frank, uh, the real ulterior motive for the whole thing is Graham is a complete pussycat. He gets very scared very easily. <laughs> I like that you said pussycat. A pussycat. Uh, he, uh, he gets scared, and so the more that I put him in situations that he is going to wet himself or soil his, his uh, kilt, then the better for me. So I force soil. him, force him, <laughs> soil his kilt. I force him to jump out of things, and we went on bungee swings, and we go in helicopters and do all this stuff, yeah. A lot of fun. So, okay, so you've already said you're the braver one of the two. Yes, I think that would be fair like. to say. Okay, yeah. so you're pushing him to do it. I do, um, and I think it just gives me more bravado, I yeah. think. You know, if I am a little bit scared, and to be honest, I was, um, one of the amazing things we did, we went in a helicopter up to a glacier, 7,000 feet up, in the height of summer, yeah. an enormous glacier, um, and it was incredible. We landed oh, the helicopter wow. there, but to be honest, I don't love helicopters. Um, but it was such an incredible experience. So yeah. Have we really found fun. your fear? Is it heights, or is it just heights? Uh, no, no, not not heights. No, I'm fine with heights, but uh, helicopters. Yeah, I don't trust Freak them. Yeah. I know you guys are very close. Uh, so close that you have you shared the camper, but you've also shared other spaces together when you were writing other books. So what is it like being roommates? Who's messier? Who does the dishes? What's that dynamic? Well, I do all the work, basically. Okay. Yeah, I do all the driving. Uh, <gasps> we traveled all around uh, in, this time around New Zealand. We've also uh, we did our first season of the show and the book um, in Scotland. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the basic one that does all the work. Yeah. Yes, got it. So he doesn't pull his weight. Weight. Never. Is what you're no. But, you know, someone's got to do it. And, no, it's been a great adventure, honestly. Uh, New Zealand is an incredible country. And then also one of the, the amazing points is we got to um, meet the, the Maori. We got to learn a lot about their culture. Yeah. Um, they came from the Pacific Islands in the 1400s. Okay. Um, they were sort of, I guess, the indigenous people there for hundreds of years till the Brits came and colonized. They have great traditions, you so know, cool. from doing the haka. They have... Uh, these, um, you know, they have moku, which is uh, essentially their sort of, I guess you could call it tattoo, the way that they express themselves, uh, paint themselves. They have just an incredible, incredible culture. And we were very, very lucky to be invited to, wow. to visit a local tribe, uh, yeah. Niwi, um, and that was uh, really special. It sounds like you really immerse yourself kind of into the whole experience. Yeah. So for you going to New Zealand, doing this journey, what did you learn about yourself, if anything? Oh, um, what did I learn about myself? Yes. I mean, I do. I love all the adventure stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm big passionate into that. And Graham, I suppose, is more into the history. And uh, just to combine that was really interesting. And then to, to write this book, to write something, maybe get under the skin a bit more of, of New Zealand. Yeah. It is a, an incredible place. There's so much to explore. Um, but yeah, it's it's also, uh, I just realized that, you know, to go on a road trip, you need you need good company as well. Absolutely. I might be booking a trip. You're kind of selling New Zealand come, to me come now. Come to New Zealand. <laughs> Take the book as your guide. And, and yeah, you're, you're not going to be disappointed. It That's is an kind of amazing. Yeah. You talk a lot about going hiking and kind of getting out in the outdoors and how it's really good for your mental health. Yeah. So what do you do for self-care? Yeah. I, well, in, in fact, that is probably one of the things I do. I uh, created a fitness, online fitness program called My Peak Challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we support charities every year. Uh, we've raised over $7 million for charities. And um, one of the things we I like to do is share my love of hiking, getting in the outdoors, getting into nature. Yeah. It's really good for you, good for your stress. Um, you know, sort of leaving your mobile phone at home and, and all of those sort of work commitments and just, I know, taking, breathing in some fresh air. It can really help, you know, even five, 10 minute walk a day uh, out in nature, if you can, is yeah. so good for your mental health. 
I totally agree. I try to do it. I'm not so good at it. And I'm addicted to my phone. So any tips would aren't be really good. Really aren't we all? Yeah, I mean, it's really difficult, isn't it? But I think, you know, if you just switch off, uh, certainly from such a busy lifestyle, you yeah. know, it's really great to get out in nature. And I mean, if you can, you've got somewhere nearby to go, go, to go do a quick walk. It's exactly. the best for your health. Okay, let's talk about this gin. Let's um, talk about the gin. People have really talked this up to me, and I have right. not had any. Okay, high so, expectations, yeah. Yes, so tell me about why you wanted to do it. Yeah. It's every, I know a lot of your roots is, are tied to it. So. Sure, yeah, this is the Sassanac Wild Scottish Gin. Um, I'm from Scotland, obviously, and all of the botanicals, so essentially all the ingredients are from where I'm from in the southwest of Scotland. A lot of gins that are created, especially in Scotland, they use botanicals like citrus, or coriander seed and things that yeah. are not naturally from Scotland. Okay. Everything here is. So we've got um, we've got juniper, we've got heather, we've got toasted oats. Mm -hmm. There are crab apples. There's Ooh. rhubarb, blaeberries. It really is a very balanced gin. I took a long time trying to create this. I wanted to make a very balanced, very innovation style gin. I don't want anything too strong in juniper or like one flavor profile. It's really clean, really crisp, delicious and available wherever you buy your liquor. We have the bar cart here. We're we do. all set up. Yes. I would love for you to make me a cocktail. I would love to make you a cocktail. <laughs> so I'm gonna make you a cocktail that kind of in keeping with the whole New Zealand thing. Um, it's called the Bee's Knees. Okay. Uh, probably because it's such a great little cocktail, but the reason it, it's called a Bee's Knees is because we use honey. Love. And New Zealand is very famously known for manuka honey, which has a lot of health benefits. Oh, um, I, I eat manuka honey in my coffee. Right. Yes. Well, it comes from New Zealand. Okay. The bees, they, you know, get the po pollen from the manuka plant and they um, have all these great health properties. So anyway, yes. So drinking this cocktail will not only be a lot of fun, but also okay. it's healthy as well, right? Love it. Healthy. Okay, the bees needs really simple cocktail to make. Only a couple of ingredients. So what you're going to need, first of all, you're going to need a shaker. Um, we're going to put in our ingredients. You want two ounces of delicious wild Scottish gin. Um, we don't have a jigger here, a way to, to measure it. So I'm just going to do this by eye. I know you like your drinks kind of spirit forward. So we're going to do, do two ounces of, of, uh, of our wild Scottish gin. Okay. You're going to do, uh, you want some nice honey, obviously manuka honey. It's mm -hmm. got all those health benefits. We're going to do like, let's say half an ounce or just a good couple of like a teaspoon and a bit. Yeah, that looks great. Gorgeous. I promise it's gonna be good. I and believe then you. lemons, fresh lemons always best. You're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. So I'm gonna say that's like roughly, probably a whole lemon, maybe a bit less. I'm doing this to catch the pips. You don't wanna be drinking those. Um, I think I'll throw this. This kind of seems like a good drink if you're sick and you still wanna go out. Right, right, <laughs> yes. Well, do you know a hot toddy? Hot toddy is a, a, a Scottish drink that we also make, and it's mm -hmm. with honey, lemon, you can put cloves in there, hot water, and whiskey. Yeah. Um, excuse my, my mess. Now, we want to put some ice in here. Oh, oh look, we have a little there container. You, you guys think of everything. Um, excuse my hands. I'm going to put lots of ice in here. In fact, we're going to Beautiful. throw it all in there. I'm going to put some ice in there. Look at you. Listen, if all else fails, you got a bartending gig. You haven't tasted you know. it yet. <laughs> And then we have to shake it. Half the, half the thing about bartending is just looking good, doing it, and being friendly. The drinks don't have to be good. Yeah, give us a good shake, Sam. There you go, there good you shake. Go. It's nice and cold, my hands are freezing. Um, here we go, cheers. Sip or spill, kilts or trousers? Oh, I mean, absolutely. Do, do I drink while I do this? Or what? Sure. Yeah, it kilts all the time. Kilts. kilts all uh, the time. We wore kilts, obviously, uh, in, in uh, New Zealand. Um, can be a little bit drafty, especially on a bungee or yes. uh, on a helicopter. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, kilts are great. They're very comfortable as well. Okay, that they are comfortable. Yeah. Uh, that leads me into: Do you go commando under the uh, kilt? Wow, it's, uh, is that I'm, a personal question? Yeah, it's probably quite personal, <laughs> but. Uh, I mean, uh, sure, do I just keep drinking? Oh, uh, he's sipping, oh. okay. Um, whatever your comfort level is, yes. Okay, you did say it was drafty, so I think we could read between the lines with mm. that. Uh, if you weren't an actor, you would be? I would, <laughs> not a bartender. Um, I would be, what would I be? I, I'm, I'm kind of into to food, I'm maybe a chef. 
Oh. Or a, maybe a sports person, but I'm not very good at anything. Are you, but, good, at, are you good at any sports? Um, I feel like I'm okay at things. Um, I do like to do work out and do various activities, yeah. But okay. I, I'm not really a, a, a team player. Um, I like endurance sports, I like being on my own, hiking, cycling, all that stuff. Okay, yeah. close enough, right? First celebrity crush. Oh, first celebrity crush. Wow, I think I've I probably, I'm probably Gillian Anderson. Um, yeah, I worked with her as well uh, on a movie yes. years ago, but she, I mean, she's just incredible. I know she's what gorgeous. an uh, amazing, gorgeous amazing woman. Actress. And and Mulder and Scully, you know, I was obsessed, The X-Files, all that stuff. Yeah. Did you tell her that you were, she was your celebrity Oh crush? God, no, 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 I couldn't tell her that. But um, <laughs> she's just remarkable. She's got great charisma and she's very funny. Um, and in that great show, Sex Education as well, brilliant. Okay, I love it. She's a good one. I, she is. She might be mine too. Uh, okay, Scottish word that's most often mistaken. Mistaken. Um, I guess, well, can, you know, you can, right? So it means you know. But people say, so you, you can, you can, you can run in New York. I don't get, oh, you came? Is that what you're saying? You can. You no. Came. See, it's mis misunderstood. It means. You, you, do you know? Okay. Like, do you, do you know? You, um, like, like, this is a strong drink, you can. Got it. Okay. No, okay. You don't yeah. Get it. Yeah, that's not, yeah. that okay. sounds challenging for right. us Americans. Yeah. I can see why people will get mistaken with that. Okay, coming straight from the book. Yes. Is it true you get a full body wax? What? Page 207. Uh, well, he probably wrote that bit. <laughs> uh, full body wax. Um, not normally. However, we did go to a place called Hell's Gate which um, is this geothermal area. So a lot of the Maori, they uh, use the geothermal for, for many hundreds of years to, to cook with, um, to, to use it as natural defenses, but it has a lot of health properties as well. Okay. There's a lot of ammonia in there. So if you have a wound and you bathe in the waters that are heated by the geothermal activity, your wound will actually heal quicker. It's incredible. So, um, yes, we went to Hell's Gate, and there is a whole muddy area of, like, warm mud that's heated by this geothermal cool. activity. And we bathed in it, so it's like a spa. Mm. So, yeah, pretty cool. I love that. I no love body how waxing. Sam just went from full body wax to health benefits of... <laughs> to the spa. Yeah, natural spa. Okay, uh, what is your number one rule for dating? I have to ask for the ladies. Um, the number one rule for dating... Well, I mean, they have to love Scottish uh, gin. Or whiskey. Uh, so I guess if they enjoy a tipple would be helpful. Um, this kind of feels like a little date right now, actually. It is a little date. Yeah. We're like, except there's like it's a like lot of people watching speed dating us. while people watch. This yeah. is what it would be like to be on The Bachelor. Is it? Yeah, right, because right, there would right, be right. cameras and oh, we God. would be like... We're like, hey, we're just having a great time. But actually yeah. you're all watching. Okay. Exactly. Okay, last time you drank too much. Because there's uh, lots of drinking stories in this book. Yeah, there, there are. Yeah, so in um, New Zealand, obviously, it's also famous for wine. Uh, has amazing vineyards. Um, Sauvignon Blanc is obviously like their, their most famous export. Um, but actually, one of my favorites is a Riesling from New Zealand. Um, really enjoy that. But uh, they also have great whiskey down, down under as well. I do um, like a Riesling from your, I agree do you? with you. Yes. Yeah, there's one in particular I really enjoy. Um, I probably wouldn't I plug it right now, but it's really delicious. Um, Rieslings, obviously, I think normally come from you know, uh, traditionally Austria and Germany okay. uh, and are very oily and like that sort of petroleum taste, but they're a lot lighter and crisper for the ones that come from New Zealand. So we had a bit of a competition, myself and Graham, in New Zealand, not to drink as much wine as we could, okay. but we actually had a competition and unfortunately, he may have won. He may have won. Maybe. All right. And final question. Yeah. Your recent Men in Kilts teaser went mm. viral as a thirst trap. Oh. Yes. Did you know this? No. Okay. Do you self-identify as a thirst trap? What? What? What did it? What was in it? I don't even know what was in it. <laughs> it was very thirst. Uh, listen, was I, it? I the people loved it. Oh right. You don't know this. No. You're, are you being humble? No, I am not being humble. Okay. Um, I will have to watch it myself. Um, no, I mean I'm not a thirst trap, but I'm certainly thirsty. So. There you go. Cheers that was a good that. answer. Thank you. Cheers. Mm. Mm.